Hey guys, in this video I'm going to talk about how I fitted out my narrowboat with zero DIY experience. Luckily though, I took a lot of pictures along the way, so let's dive in and see how I did it. Okay, so I'm just going to go through it piece by piece basically. I'm going to start off with the very first picture that I got sent, actually this flat piece of steel, and then you gradually see them welding the pieces together and it starts to look more and more boat-like, a bit more boaty, bit more boaty, and then all of a sudden, bam, it's a narrow boat, it's crazy. So that's my boat. Then obviously, when they'd finished it, I got it delivered. It got delivered in this disgusting baby blue color. So very swiftly, I was gonna start painting that, this kind of ox red, almost blood color. Um, as you can see, inside, it's just all spray foamed. It's just a very basic floor, you can see the, uh, water tank, the uh, rope fenders that go at the bow and the stern of the boat. And there was, even though it was a brand new boat, there were some little spots of rust here and there, so I'm getting the old uh, red oxide primer out. I had to take the windows out in order to paint the boat, obviously, so I had to do that, and you can see me uh, demonstrating that here. You then also have to uh, sand it back a little bit, paint it again. It's quite a lengthy process. I think I ended up doing about five coats of paint, and it's starting to look much more like the boat that you recognise as being crucible. Yeah, look at that. I once got told it looked like a stealth bomber and I took that as a complete compliment. Now we're moving on to starting to get rid of all that nasty spray foam and you need to cut the spray foam off so that you can start building all the woodwork. And then something that's going to come up quite a lot in this video is I made a lot of the inside woodwork of the boat out of scaffolding boards and old pallets and I tried whenever possible not to waste any wood. So you can see here is me using even the tiny little off cuts of wood to try and make inserts to go into the uh, bow door I think. This is the first proper woodwork and I built myself a set. I guess, of stairs for the stern of the boat. I was actually quite pleased with that. I haven't really done woodwork before. I thought they looked pretty cool. Um, this is where I'm cutting these neoprene rings. It's because I wanted to be able to take the mushroom vents on and off, check underneath them without sticking them down, but I wanted it to be waterproof at the same time. Ah, you can see now I'm finally starting to move on to working on the floor. First thing I did was I took up the floor to check that everything was fine underneath and to check all the ballast was pretty well balanced and everything was fine under there. And then I moved on to sorting out the scaffolding board floor, uh, which involved obviously cutting a lot of scaffolding boards and staining them. And here you can see as soon as you actually start to get the floor down it instantly changes the way the boat looks straight away I was like wow yeah this is a really a vibe I really quite like this so it's crazy the difference it makes when you get the floor down and this is me installing what I'm gonna be doing underneath the gunnels pallets and they're ready to be stained when the stove gets installed this is the inside of uh, the control box which is actually outside the boat it was actually all raw steel inside and so it had rust in it already which was a bit of an oversight but you know I just put some stuff called fur tan in it I even ended up putting a little brass vent on the outside to make it look a bit neater. This is some donated wood from the boat in front of me. Anytime anybody was getting rid of any wood on the marina, I was just like, I'll have that, and I turned it into something. This is the stove finally installed. It looks amazing, doesn't it? It looks so new as well. And then I made my first cup of tea on the stove. So you can see now with the stove and the floor, it's really starting to take shape already, which is crazy how quickly it can start to look like something else. Right, now we're moving on to the water tank and I started to build a frame so that the water tank wouldn't move around and I could secure it at the bow of the boat. And um, you can see where it's gonna slide underneath there. Yeah, that's the water tank installed. It wasn't going anywhere then. I'm starting to make some bulkheads here. Bulkheads, for anybody that doesn't know, is just basically what you call walls on a boat. This is part of that wood that was donated by the other boat in front of me, and I decided I wanted to turn the wood into sort of a parquet floor, so I was just playing around with different ideas of how to do that. Yeah, and this is actually installed in the room. Many more pallets that were gonna eventually be broken down. I spent a long time just breaking down pallets because it was effectively free wood. So you can see I'm doing above the gunnels now as well. And that's a definite difference there as soon as it gets stained. This is kind of an underfloor sort of fridge area. Underneath that metal is the canal. So that actually stays quite cool. And I'm starting to build the cupboards in the galley area with shelves. So you see here, I'm starting to make the doors for the cupboards in the galley area. And even though this was a brand new boat, I wanted it to kind of look old and have a feel of an old Pub, I think is the way I described it to somebody. So this is a biscuit jointer and it's a thing that's designed for putting planks together and that little tub. They're not biscuits in there, they're these little things that you put in between the planks that helps them glue together and be much stronger. These three planks will eventually become my kitchen top. And what I did was I Danish oiled them instead of staining them. So it had a different feel to it. That is the Danish oiled 
kitchen top in all its glory. These are just some shelves that I Danish oiled and they've got what's called a living edge to it. It's basically like the bark has still been left on and I quite like that. I thought it had quite a rustic feel to it. This is my first wood storage area as well. I wanted lots of wood storage inside the boat so that even if it was raining outside, I would always still have access to dry wood. This is me designing more of the bed area of the boat. Those things you can see I've used to divide each side are actually trellises that you would use in a garden or something like that because it actually ended up being the cheapest way of doing that. This is an upper frame for the bed that I was making. I think that design, I think it's called a, a gallows frame, a design that was used a lot in old cottages and things like that. And I wanted to evoke that feel on my boat and the frame of the bed is definitely coming together now. This is actually a desk that I brought from my flat, but in order to get it onto the boat, I actually had to cut the legs off and then put them back on afterwards, which is pretty crazy. This is my first attempt at 12 volt electrics. It was very rudimentary, very basic, but I was just kind of teaching myself how to not electrocute myself. This was the first copper pipe radiator that I made for the boat. I actually ended up having three of these and they're attached to my Wabasto. I wanted brass switches on the boat, but they were quite expensive to buy. So I ended up just buying a sheet of brass, cutting it out myself, buying the components and making it. And it was like a fraction of the price. So you can see I'm moving on to plumbing and stuff now. This is the first sink design that I had with two taps, but I ended up changing that. This is the first hole I actually drilled into the actual steel of the boat, which was a bit nerve wracking. And it was for the water cap. And you can see now where it goes down from the water cap through that tube into the water tank. This is the uh, main water pump on the boat with an accumulator next to it. I actually bought it together in a kit. They came together and that's it installed up to the water tank. That's my sink with the new tap design. I went for a mixed tap in the end. And these are the two feeds coming from the engine. So this is where the hot water gets heated up when you run the engine. Here's my sink for the bathroom. I've got this solid piece of teak. The, the sink is basically carved out of it. It's pretty cool really. This is the start of my shower. This is the shower tray I got. I actually got quite a shallow shower tray. You have to obviously remember that on an Arabic, all the dimensions are much more restricted. And so a lot of the things you build have to be a lot smaller. And in the background there, you can see a thing called a whale gulper. And that is because you are technically below water level. So you have to pump the water up and out of the side of the boat. This is the shower starting to take shape there with marine ply, as you can see. And then obviously the next stage of the shower was to start tiling it. This is the first shower I've ever tiled as well. And then after you've grouted it and tiling the floor, I've got these slate tiles that I used on the floor of the bathroom. Quite like the look of that as well. This is where I started to take the electrics a little bit more seriously. That is my distribution board or circuit breaker. And here's the back of the circuit breaker board um, with all the electrics starting to go into that. You can see that I labeled up all of my electrics with these labels so that everything, everywhere on the boat, at any point I could lift a panel, I would know what that cable was. And I felt like that, although that took a long time to do it, it was a good investment of my time because it meant that like, if things go wrong in the future, I'll know exactly what has gone wrong. These are kind of industrial electrical conduits that I ran underneath all of the gunnels, which all of my electrics ran through. My electrical cupboard starting to take shape a lot more there. Here's my three lithium batteries all linked together and you can see that they're going into a main off switch and this is the roof of the bedroom and I actually made this out of bits and donated wood that was from the slats of a bed I used that bendiness to basically make it go with the angle of the roof of the narrowboat and what it meant is that I could get the roof that much higher somebody said that it looked a bit like a viking longboat which I quite like that this is sort of a collar that goes around my flue pipe and it's so that the flue pipe obviously gets very hot and is actually not touching the wood at all. This is the calcium silicate board that I used to make the surround around my stove. So you can see I used the same slate tiles that I did in the bathroom floor and then I covered it in wood as you can see there as well. Now I move on to the outside and installed my tunnel light. You can see I had to drill holes for the cable glands to go through. I installed my solar panels. And you can see now the boat is pretty much finished. And this is the boat that you guys probably recognize from the background of my videos. It's a nice sink there. That's my vinyl room, the bedroom, and my favorite room probably, the galley. And then the living room as well. All cozy, the bathroom. Very proud of it. Put a bit of your heart and soul into it and then where it's meant to be, on the canal. Well, that's a lot longer than I thought it would be. It's kind of like one of those things where somebody shows you slides from their holiday. Because I didn't film it, I just took pictures. And maybe it'll really inspire some questions that I can answer in the future. Thanks for sticking with it, guys. And thanks for sticking with the channel. If you haven't already, like and subscribe. I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.